Okay. Hey, do you have any comments on that first one? Do you have any, any questions or comments or feedback or anything? Yes. Yes. Uh, as I was saying, uh, it's really hard to kind of get into my head these five okay. minutes. Please time. And what I would appreciate, or what would help me, yeah. is kind of more examples so I can... Because more examples. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. But I think it takes time. To yes. So yeah, yeah, it takes time to get your brain into this framework. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. And uh, I catch that. Yeah. Time is not on our side. Right? That's that. But I got the, gen the general, general idea. idea. Okay. Anything else? Any questions? Or Okay. Okay. So we have this is who we are. This is reality. Yeah? This is we have some strengths, some weaknesses, um, something's completely missing. Yeah? And and our relationships go uh, suffer because of that. Because when my wife says, Stephen, I need you to do this well, I don't have it. I don't have that natural response to me. Um, and when I hope and dream that she, you know, she will give, I'm talking to something specific in her, and she can't give it back, I go, oh, well, where is God's love? Where, how can I? How can I enjoy it? You know? So I might you know, hug her and say, in the kitchen, and go, you know, let's just romance, and let's you know, just a moment together in the kitchen. And she said, get your hands off, I'm doing the thing. <laughs> I'm cooking a meal, can't you see? You know? And I go, well, come on, you know, you can take an extra hour to cook a meal, it doesn't matter, we can have some fun. But, but you know, the resp I'm talking to something, and it's just not there sometimes. You know, she's talking to something. So the question is, how do we get the energy for growth? How do we grow this? Because it takes energy to grow. We take, we understand this vitality. Yeah? We need some kind of energy for growth to take place. It just doesn't happen by itself. Okay? So we have these skills of listening, of behaving, of acting in certain ways, of trying to build relationships. So but where do we get this energy to grow? Where does a company get energy for growth? Where does anything get energy for growth? Does it come from a certain dynamic which produces energy, which allows us to grow? And there's some dynamic which produces this energy, and this energy goes into our growth. So we are willing to grow. We desire to grow. We are willing to Put, you know, to make the effort to grow. Okay, so these are the these are different set of principles. These are the these are the principles of procreation. These are the, the principles by which God has given us this principle where we get the energy for growth. Okay, and it comes to do with our attitude towards life. It's a self management of our brain. It's, a, it's an attitude we have to manage attitudes towards life. So, it's, it's not a skill. It is a skill, but it's not a skill. It's a habit. It's an attitude towards the relationships. It's an attitude. Um, and if you have the right attitude, you can grow. And if you refuse to have the right attitudes, you can say, I don't want to grow. But it's an attitude towards growth. Okay? And if you don't have this attitude, growth will be hard. Growth will be difficult. You will end up endlessly arguing. And if you can choose, you can so it's up to you, it's your choice for you to take the attitude of growth or not. Okay. So I call them attitudes of the heart because they spring from the heart to want to grow. It comes from the heart to say, I want to become God's child. I want to become. It comes from this, from, from your own heart to push you out into the world to grow in the world. Okay. 
doesn't it have to do with how much I'm longing for to I was I to to have this attitude I have a feeling something you have to decide I want Yeah, that's right. No, it is hard for it. This was the way to explain it. Yes, it's, it's the longing for it, the heart for it, the heart that becomes most shallow dog, you can say it that way. You can also say, I need to manage, I need to take control of my own personal growth. I, only I, can grow myself. It is my responsibility. And therefore I have to manage this. I have to get some control over this. And so I have these skills, these weaknesses and non-weaknesses. Yeah? Um, but how do I grow? It's this, I, I, I have to have some sense of consciousness that I am willing to, 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 to manage this, desire to do this. Yeah. And if I don't have that, I will not. I would just say, oh, life sucks. You're all full. <laughs> I have nothing I can do. All lies. They're all lies. Yeah? But, but we, we, if, if you say, I can grow, I want to grow, for the sake of God's life, for the sake of my children, for the sake of my wife, for the sake of everything. Yeah? So, it says it very clearly. It gives us in the divine principle, this section 431. It clearly explains how God comes in and gives us the energy for growth. It's exactly what we need. It's exact instructions from the principle of creation. It's very clear. When two entities of two different things, and they're both God's manifestation, create a common base, in other words, they have a common goal together. Yeah? To seek to unite and so to create something good together. When they two people come together and they want to make something good happen, they establish a four position foundation. And they engage in give and take action. So my wife and Gay, we come together to start a family and we engage in give and take action to create a family. Yeah? In accomplishing this, to accomplish this goal, the emotional force that the subject partner gives to the object partner is called love. I have to give, give something my wife sees as beautiful. I have to give her something. Yeah? I have to give her a massage, I have to give her my clean work, I have to give her a nurturing, I have to give her a protective. I have to give something. Give something. And the emotional force of the object partner returns to the subject partner is called beauty. The force of love is active and the stimulation of beauty is passive. The purpose of love and beauty is to enable two wholesome beings springing forth from God to establish the four position foundation and realize the purpose of creation. It is this process of love and beauty that we realize the purpose of creation. By sharing love and beauty with each other, they join in harmonious oneness, become a third of so this is the process where we realize the purpose of creation. It's a very, very fundamental process. And we don't teach it in our schools or anywhere, but it is the most fundamental force that controls growth and development in human beings, in companies, in every situation. These rules apply to every level of society. <coughs> so what is he actually talking about? This dynamic describes how we generate energy for personal growth, for personal co-creation. I give something into the relationship. I have the heart to offer something, some love, okay? And I see the beauty. I see the beauty. Then this generates energy, vitality, and it brings about personal growth. This is how it works. Okay. So, okay, okay, well, I'll explain a bit more. Okay, so they've got this guy here, he's married to her, okay. He wants to give something to her to make her happy or something. But there's a sense, of, 
Can I appreciate her? Can I feel grateful for this experience? If I appreciate my wife, if I like her, <laughs> if I value her, I'm much more likely to say, darling, what can I do for you? If I don't like my wife, if I can't see the beauty in her, if I don't, you know, go, oh my gosh, this is what she is, I'm less likely to give to her, I'm less likely to grow. So it's my choice. Can I see the beauty in her? And if I, the more I see the beauty in her, the more I'm willing to do whatever it takes to grow. And the less I work on seeing the beauty, if I don't work on that, the less likely I am to grow. It is the most fundamental thing. Can I see the beauty or not see the beauty? That's it. That's what it all comes down to. If I do not work and manage my ability to see the beauty in my life on a consistent basis every day, I will not grow. I will just sit there. I will not develop. If, if, I'm, if I wake up in the morning and I kind of Ten, ten minutes or five minutes, three minutes, just thinking about how wonderful my wife is, how, good, how many good things she does for me, things like this. Then, when she comes to me and says, darling, can you do this? And then, my heart is already saying, of course I can, because she's so wonderful. But if I wake up in the morning and say, oh my gosh, we had a row last night. Oh my gosh, she, she makes a mess of your life. And she says, you know, can you do this? I go, well, for you, maybe not. <laughs> do you get the point? So can I see the beauty in my wife or my husband on a consistent basis? It's the most fundamental law on whether I'm going to grow. If I, you walk in the door, Ella, and I kind of like you, and I kind of like the way you dress, and the way you smile, and I see beauty in you, appreciate it, say, oh, there's something really interesting, then I'm much more likely to say, hi, Eva, that's so nice to meet you, tell me about yourself, okay? And if you walk in the door, and, and I thought, my gosh, this guy, you know, he's weird, who would love him, you know? I'm more likely to say, well, hi, and bye, that's it. And no growth will take place at all, no development, no mind knowledge, life, anything. He might come in as my savior. He might be here to teach me something really special. He might be giving some really good advice. But I have completely blocked him because I said, I do not like, I do not appreciate anything in him at all. And that's it. And this is the most fundamental life force that develops businesses, develops people in businesses, it develops children. So when you're a teacher, if you walk into a classroom and you're saying, gosh, these children are awful. <laughs> they're so well, so terribly behaved. I hear they're really difficult to control. Are you going to give something to them? Are you going to have energy for them? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. No way. You're going to be drained out. You're going to be drained out. Just by, and they're going to feel it instantly. And they're going to misbehave even more. But if you walk in and you say, I see the beauty in you. I see the inherent goodness in you. I see the potential in you. I see all these wonderful things. Hi, kids. Let's do this. You can grow. I believe in this. And you have so much more energy. And you will grow to stretch. You are willing to stretch to fulfill their needs. You're willing to push yourself. You're willing to go to the library and study classroom management. You're willing to go off and learn different <coughs> techniques because these kids don't listen to you. So how do I get there? But you know you can do this. So because of love for them, because you see the beauty in them, because you see the goodness in them, you're willing to put the effort in to grow. So it has nothing to do with the other person. No. It's all about 10 out of 10. It's all about oh, your perception. Good. It's your good. <laughs> good. This is the point. So it's also in our organization. It's not about whether he's mm -hmm. doing the right thing. <laughs> it's all about actually my perception of people. Not 
So we can't judge others. Yes, technically. You are who you are. You are. Exactly. Yeah. Technically, you are who you are. Accepting, accepting my partner exactly who they are and still appreciating them is the fundamental basis for growth. To say they are how they are. He's got this strength, this weakness, and whatever he is, but I can still see that beauty in him. I can still see goodness in him. And because I see goodness and beauty in him, I'm willing to do what is necessary to, to make this relationship work and to help him grow, and hopefully he'll do the same for me. So you don't blame anybody. So you don't blame. No. It's not your problem, it's my problem. Yeah. Well, it's your problem. No, I mean, <laughs> we are who we are. We can't, we are, you know, this section of the principle, you know, in, at the end of restoration section, you know, that we are part of this historical restoration process. And we are who we are, and it's our job to take what we have right in front of us right now and to move it forward. That's it. And it will never be ideal this year, next year, but we can in 10 generations <coughs> make it if we get that force of growth and development working and appreciating and valuing each other and saying, yeah, we can do this. Let's get on with it together. So my marriage, once I understood this, when I caught this point, I found out almost every day there were times of the day when I did not appreciate my wife. And I didn't, and there were times when she was acting to me that made it hard to appreciate her. And so I had to develop new ways to appreciate. So that if one method wasn't working, I had another. And if that one wasn't working, I had another. And then another one, and another one. So I always had a continual resources to draw upon and say, she's lovely. She is really an amazing woman. Even if she just kind of got upset with me the other day. Hi, you're wonderful. You're still lovable. Because I've learned to manage my own internal world better. My own appreciation of who she is better. And if I, I didn't have many resources. In fact, I was terribly critical of people. I can still be very judgmental in my own heart. But towards my wife, I am trying to take it like a constant feeling of, you are an awesome lady. You are wonderful to me, and I really appreciate it. And the longer I can hold that, the more I'm going to invest in the relationship or grow up about. Mm -hmm. When she says, do something, I say, yeah, don't. Of course not. Not a problem now. Yeah. I never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so perfect, but I'm much better than I was because sometimes I would kind of disappear for a few days or in my own heart or three days and that was definitely, you know, wasn't helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she's got better at, at just appreciating. You know, so this is wonderful. Yeah. So, but it comes down to, you know, because you, you, when you do every morning, you've had have children, yeah? And, and, and every morning you have to wake up and say, hi kids, I believe in you. I trust in you. It's like you've forgotten the day before all that. And you just say, I am here to love you for who you are and try to help you and support you. And we kind of do this in some ways naturally with children. But with our partner, we find it harder. Would you kind of agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it's, it's somehow just having the internal attitude change. But this is my partner, it's who they are, and they're <coughs> still like, we're all children of God, we're all, I think. Can I just ask you a question yeah. about this diagram? Yeah, yeah. So the heart. An, an internal attitude to give love. Yeah, to give love. And in principle, it says the object gives beauty back. Yeah. But it says that, when it says the heart and the internal attitude to seek beauty, is that coming from the object or is that coming from the subject? From him. He okay, wants so to seek all, beauty. All of that is coming from him. Yeah, technically. The heart, it's the heart to give something to, into yeah. the relationship and it's the heart to appreciate. So what is she giving back? Now wait, well, yeah. she can be there and she can also be on the side. I've just got this man, yeah. because women are always the givers. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, men can give too. But, but fundamentally, if he, can, if he finds it hard to give, he can seek to appreciate, and that will trigger giving. Yeah? 
So if I don't feel like I'm very inspired to give anything to my wife right now, if I sit down for five minutes and think, actually, she's, she did this nice to me, and she did this, and she does this, and within a few minutes, I go, oh, she's really happy. I, I can go and break tea or dinner or whatever it takes to make this relationship work better. So I can trigger my desire to give by triggering the beauty, by managing the beauty or sense of appreciation. Yeah? But of course, the other way it works around. When I give and, and she seems to enjoy it, then I can appreciate that too. And I say, oh, I'll do it again. You know. So if I clean the kitchen for the first time and she shows appreciation, I go, okay, I'll do it again. There's a lot of women who go, oh, I've this rule. And they, 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 they say, but you missed this bit, this bit, this bit. And I think it goes, okay, I'm never going to go there again. Don't tell me. You know, I can never make you happy. You know? So. It is this, if you want him to grow, you have to show you appreciate. That's it. It's a simple rule. Yeah. Another question. May I ask you a question? So, so <clears throat> if you don't love yourself, value yourself, good. it's very hard to give love. Ah, good. And uh, in this fallen world, a lot of people don't feel loved hmm? because they don't realize the value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if we love ourselves, if yes. we feel value mm -hmm. as a child of God, mm -hmm. Then it's a lot easier to give. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to make that. Yeah. It's an internal process too. Absolutely. All these things work on an internal level and an external level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're very right. Can I appreciate the good inside myself? Do I value myself? Do I think I've got something useful for the world? Mm -hmm. And then I can tr triggers me. If I think I'm a loser, if I think I'm not really very good as a human being, then I'm less likely to give to the world. Yeah. It's just as it is. So, when I give and I see you appreciating, of course, of course, joy is created. It creates an energy. Yeah? So you can, you can either start with appreciation or you can start with giving. It, it's kind of a cycle. And there's no, there's, no, there's no beginning, you might say. It's an internal <coughs> energy source. But without this energy source, you can't grow. It just, that, there's no energy for growth. We just say, oh, here he is again, oh, there she is again, hi. And you just carry on your existence together as kind of two people who are just kind of coping with each other. But they, you can do that for years without really growing. Yeah? And, and, and that's sad. And you can, because it can be far more energetic for life. If you somehow can get this, I really appreciate you, and <coughs> you're wonderful. And, I give to you, and, you know, let's dance, and, you know, these kind of things. It's all an act of internal attitude of, I want to see the beauty in you, because that will trigger me to be happier with you. Okay? So, when I seek to give my wife what my wife likes or needs, or what our relationship needs, not always what I like, not always what I know how to give, then I grow. Okay? So my wife said, can you do the cooking? And I said, well, I'm not very good at it. Can you help? I need more around the home. I'm stressed. I've got a kid. And I said, okay, I don't know. So I'm, she asked me, and I said, I can do that, yeah? So when I seek to give what she likes or needs, and I, then I can grow. So I said, out of my love for my wife, my appreciation for what she's doing, I'm willing to take on that cooking. Yeah? And I'm willing to push myself for that love, for the sake of love. Okay? And this creates forces. Yeah, we know this existence of multiplication action. Yeah? And generates forces, and this energy allows me to grow. And it, this generates my, one of my five types of love. So because I appreciate my ch the children, I'm willing to. So value my children, I'm going to go off and learn about the parenting skills. Some of us have read parenting books, for example. Yeah? For my love for that, my appreciation for their potential. And, and, and then life becomes meaningful. Life becomes meaningful. Oh, this is, this is what life is about. It becomes a meaningful life. It's about growth and development. Okay? So, uh, what would you say to people who, uh, who like on the woman being the 
Okay. She can, she can. There's always, it's just a matter of Because in, in the second half of that sentence, you can use the second part of that chapter 4.3, it says, once you get into this cycle of appreciation and beauty, of, of feeling the love and beauty, the subject becomes the subject of feeling and beauty. So, so what, when you're really connected to the couple, when you feel like you're really enjoying each other's life and back on to it, etc., etc., then what's happening is you're both appreciating each other and valuing each other and you're not being terribly critical and, and you're both giving into the relationship and you both thought this is working well. This is love and beauty and being love and being subject to it and my wife can tell me what to do and I can ask her what to do and it just becomes a harmonious spiral. But of course there are times when that doesn't work. Yeah? Well, God hopes it will work. The principle says this is how it goes. This is now how you know God comes into your relationship. How can God be in a relationship where they say, What a nasty wife? She's an animal, she didn't talk to us. Why can't you be lying there? You can all be there. That's enough, you know. So, if you understand this, yeah, so this is what it says in the second part. Yeah, when subject and partner and object partner become completely one in harmony, love is found within beauty and beauty is found within love, this is because when a subject object, and object partner become one in a circular movement, the subject up is sometimes actually object partner, the object partner. That's how it works. But it really comes down to can I appreciate my partner every day? Because if I can't, then I'm not going to give, or I'm going to be left. I'm going to be less joyful, or I'm going to be less dynamic or less energy and, 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 and it's really whether I want to look at the beauty of my partner, wherever they are. Yeah, too, you know, don't have an husband, you know, and I think... Uh, yeah, uh, but it's too, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's your, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought you could learn, but I Yeah, yeah, no, we can talk about this in a yeah. business. You know, exactly the same. If you're a boss and you've got staff, if you show, if every day you wake up saying, these have got potential, there's hope for these workers, they've got some good attitude sometimes, etc., then you're much more likely to have positive attitude towards them. And then they feel that, and then well, when you say, can you do this? They say, yeah, okay. But if you said, they sense criticism and judgment and things like this, and, they, and you get, they say, do this, they go, oh, well, why should we? You know, you just don't like it. You know. And it's the same in friendships, it's exactly the same. Yeah. But it's growing, you know, growing is in the parental skills, you know, even if you don't have any children or your own, it's, I mean, because we have many friends who know that they don't have right. this, you know, they're right. single and so on. Yeah. How can we really inspire them? Yeah. And perhaps also they have the age they can have, you know, children. You know, and yeah. And so on. But it, it, this applies to all relationships. Mm -hmm. It's a fundamental thing. I, I really treasure, like listening to Han last night, his early church year, you know, it was really fascinating mm -hmm. to, to just listen, to listen reasonably well, to treasure, to value, to seek value. Mm -hmm. It inspires me, mm -hmm. because I know it triggers me to see, to feel close to that person, and to feel joy for that person and to feel like something useful is happening in that. Yeah? So if I can just find something beautiful in the person, if I seek for it, I'm much more likely to feel closer to that person. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So this applies to my friendships, my children. Can I listen to my children when they come home from school? Can I listen to my father? Yeah. 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 How can I inspire? Because, I mean, how can I? Yeah. I mean, like, like I know some she's a daughter, she just became 50 years old, she doesn't yeah. have a child. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, how can we inspire people? Because we have a lot of these kind of people. Yeah, so, but as I said, they all relate to you. Yeah. 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 Not, he's not my child. Yeah. I'm just saying that I, I purposely choose to find things to appreciate. Yeah. So if I can listen to his something from so I asked him a question last night, didn't I? Asked, I said, what do you enjoy about your life in the movement? Better. What was most precious? 
Why? Because I want to feel his joy, and then his joy becomes my joy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've talked about the most precious thing he's got to offer. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's my family. Mm -hmm. Now, I could just talk about the weather. I could just talk about yeah. seeing his society or something like that. But I wanted to appreciate him purposely. What was his early years like? And what was his, you know, and the difficulty? And what is he most? And so by sensing and appreciating it, I feel much closer to him. It's a good question actually, to everybody. I think. Yeah. What do you appreciate most? Uh, any kind of situation you are in. That's right. What do you appreciate most in your life? That's right. What type of situation you have. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the methods I use to manage my relationship with my wife because when things are not going so well, yeah. I will often go and say, you know, think about, <coughs> talk about the childhood or the difficulties in the childhood or the things, and the more I understand about the difficulties in the childhood, the more I can appreciate how she is so good, even despite the fact that she had a difficult childhood. So it, it's a learning methods, new ways to appreciate, the more range of ways, the greater ways to say, how can I find something to really see in this person that is really precious? Then I can manage that relationship better. I can be more positive, more consistently. But if I only have one method, or if I don't use it at all, I just feel he's good, or if today I don't feel he's good. That's it. But that's not self-management. That you can't. It's not co-creation. So you think this can apply to the the boss from hell too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can talk to if you read Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He said being a good employee can transform a boss. Appreciating, showing you sense, even the other people complaining, and you look for the beauty in your boss, you say, and you sense it, he will grow to trust you more. And based upon that trust, he might offer advice or give you chances to, to change things or give you more responsibility. But if you're sitting there with everybody else, the boss sucks, he will sense that. Yeah? Did you read his book, Seven Habits? You ever read? Mm -hmm. No. So you can transform somebody who's in a subject position by taking an object position, which is a one of appreciation. You can do that. Okay. If you don't, if he doesn't change, at least you grew a new method of appreciation, which is what Cain and Abel had to do. We were talking about that thing. But it comes back to your first, almost first thing you said there. If you, if you become a better person, everybody around you will become better. Yeah. That's kind of cool. That's it. That's, that's the fundamental rule. Everybody. Well, you can, so which feel you do that. Yeah, but everybody will improve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People will feel more comfortable to bring out at that time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I know. I know this for a fact. When I find it hard to find things to appreciate my wife, my friend, my children, my co-workers, my boss, that it is much harder for me to want to give them any of my love. I don't see anything to appreciate in you. Look at this woman. There's lots to appreciate, but I don't see it because you just, you know, I can't see it. And loving gets hard. God moved out. No energy for growth. So this is what happens in divorces or things like this. It's an issue. She they can't see the beauty anymore. They can't see that they've lost it. And part of the reason for this is that any problem we have, a problem is three times more powerful than an act of good now. Yeah. 3.14, pi, pi. You know. So in other words, if, if I don't have a weakness, I have to work to see three, three weaknesses in them for me to go, okay, I can live with it. Yeah? But if I want to be happy with them, I have to find five. Fine. So, whenever, so I went through a period in my marriage where I was saying, oh, well, something went wrong between us. I have to do five good things to repair that. I had not got the habit of that for a year or so. So it became part of me. So I also went wrong. Okay, I'm going to back in the floor. I didn't like this. <laughs> and then I'm back in. Oh, I'll forgive you. You know. And it is very important, actually. You know, I was trying to point out that because for us wives, mothers, you know, 
<laughs> they just don't look the same. And it can look all the same. <laughs> and I couldn't really appreciate it. But the said, oh, it's beautiful. It's just pretty even light, you know. It's pretty boring, you know. And because I was used to hills and open spaces and the blooming, you know, fields. And but now you make, you're taking beautiful pictures of Oh, you. there you go. Now I see all of that. So when I understood this thing, I said, I have to find a new piece mm -hmm. of nature. I have to find it. I have to love it. I have to be at one with this country and feel enjoy that. And I found it in the, mo the miniature, the and mosses, the mosses the in the little mosses, yeah. the, yeah. the way that mosses meet rock and rock yeah. colors. Yeah. Oh, this is so incredibly beautiful, which you don't have in England. So the beauty in every country, in every, in the snow, in the, in the, in the, the beautiful shades of snow and color and ripple, it's gorgeous stuff if you really look. And, but of course I could go to a desert and do the same. But it's the same in any culture. I can go to a culture, a Swedish culture, and say, this is really beautiful here and here and here. It may be weak over here, but still, this is beauty. You can see even in the desert beauty of yeah. the, the, the emptiness. Absolutely. And the moving of the... Absolutely. Sand. Yeah. sand. Yeah. And you, if you go to those people and say, can you show me the beauty? And they'll show you that. And they'll think nothing. They look for it. So it's a matter of learning to look for it and see it in different people in a different way. And the more, the, way, the more wages and value and say, oh, this person is so honest. I treasure that honesty. Uh, that person is so, is so, is just so, um, how do I say? They, they work hard. They just work hard to bring, bring the money home. They, they're very reliable. You know? Or they, you know, even little things, small things, yeah? They keep the kitchen clean or they wipe the cake or something and put them away. You know? So there's hundreds of things, yeah? So this is how God loves me every day. So how can God look, you know, so I have to learn new ways to appreciate, okay? So I had to learn for the good things that my wife was doing. She's doing, you know, she runs a kindergarten, she's loving children, she's creating events for them, and she's really, and you see these children grow and develop, and you just, you don't see them damaging, you see them undamaging, and you see, it's just so wonderful she's doing. And I'm just so inspired by this. So, and she does so much around the home, and you multitask like, I don't know how to do that. And anyway, or I can find qualities to admire, qualities, qualities to admire. So I can say, oh, you're very honest, or you work hard, or you are supportive in the community, or, you know, you, you talk well with the second gen, or you invest in them, or, you know, you've got qualities that, that are really wonderful. Okay, um, you can think about the past. If things are not working so well right now, I would go back and say, well, in the past she gave this, and she did this, and she did that, so if I'm missing it today, I can't see it, I can go back and say, wow, we had this wonderful moment, or she did this for the children, or she did that, or she did this, that. But you can see this is adult, <coughs> this is team player, this is adult. He can see and appreciate the future potential. Many times my, my appreciation for my wife is based upon I believe she can run. I believe, just like children. What did you say? I believe she can run. She can run. She can run. She can I believe with my love she can run. I can see a different woman that she cannot see, a more beautiful woman, a more competent woman, with my love and support, she can go there. And I see this woman, and I appreciate it, even though it's not there. Yeah? So it's like children, you do the same, you do the same things. I believe you can learn the math, it's a right to do this. Yeah? Okay. I can see, th I can, he can see that even through things that have been tough, you're still trying. So even though, th you know, we're having a tough time, there's still investment going on, there's still attempt to grow, there's still an attempt to heal, they're still trying, and just appreciating the fact that they're still together, trying to work it out, trying to work on it. So the more different ways I have to appreciate, 
the more I develop these different forms of appreciation, the greater ability I have to be consistent in my desire to offer love and more God and, and the more God and joy dwells in me. Yeah? The more God the more consistent I can be, the more godlike I become. Because God is consistent in his appreciation. God is consistent in his giving. So the way God looks at us, he says, well, he's not doing something good today, but he's got future potential. He's got, he did so much good in the past. He did these things. So the more choices you have to draw upon, the more consistent you can be in saying, you are wonderful. You're an amazing woman. You're a lovely children. You're a great friend. You're a wonderful worker, etc., etc. Yeah? So Father says this, he says, you know, there is nothing attractive about a small lake filled with muddy water. Yet if a pure white lotus flower grows in the middle of the mud, it makes the lake truly amazing. One flower can change an ugly lake into a beautiful lake. From this point of view, evil human beings, even if we can find even a gram of love in their hearts, can be beautiful. Wonderful. That's what he said, yeah? So he went to prostitutes, he went to these people, he went to these things, and he said, how can I find the beauty in you? He purposely put in those places where he, people would go, Ugh, I can't see the beauty here, to purposely seek out how God can love you. What is there lovable? How can I love you? The people, the people, the people who are homeless and these other people. How can I, train his brain. How can I consistently see the beauty in people I can't see? And this is your job in your marriages, your parenting, and your friendships. This is your job. <coughs> so the quick question is, how can I better learn to manage my own internal attitude so I can continue to grow under that? And can I'm willing to grow new, new, new skills for the people I care about, well, to make these relationships work better, the way our friendship work better, etc. So, can I can I make a personal decision? So I talked about this this three to one, three positives and three and one you know. So. Trying to create at least a five to one balance of positive and negatives. <laughs> to purposely choose that. Something goes wrong in your relationship. I'm going to find it. Okay. So, can I grow one of my, can I become more adult or more free child or more nurturing? Can I learn these skills by myself? And I do these things. Okay. In a lot of a lot of relationships, a lot of homes, the women get the urgent important thing, and the men get the non-urgent important things to do. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So this is a real problem because the women say, "Oh, the food needs cooking." The clothes need hurting, the kids need putting in bed, this needs doing, this needs doing right now, this needs doing right now, and it goes through like this. And the guy is sitting there going, oh, yeah. you know? And then he says, well, I've got to fix the car, but that can be done tomorrow or the next day. I have the accounts to do, maybe I can do that next week. Maybe I've got the garden, but that can be done sometime soon. So she's running around, and he's going, mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so frustrating, yeah? It's frustrating, it is! It is frustrating, you know? And so if men can become aware, aware of this is a typical relationship problem, issue, that she would appreciate him doing some of the urgent now things to, so she doesn't get so stressed, then, then the relationship can improve quite quickly and dramatically. So I went through a process, I realized this, okay, I said, but I can't, what can I do? 
I said, I, I listen, I so I went online and listened to, <coughs> to uh, Gray, John Gray, you know, men are from Mars, Venus, because he, he's this men women guy. And he says something really interesting. He says, women do not recognize the size of an act, a gift of an act. So one act, one point. So I could clean the whole windows of the house, which might take me two hours, and I would get the same benefit, she would gain the same benefits, the same part, as if I just wiped the table down. <laughs> there are some things that women register more deeply, like if you really listen to them. Yeah. Tell me about the feelings, darling. How are you feeling? Now that's worth three points. Now already <laughs> you're, 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 you're winning there. But one rose, 12 roses, doesn't make any Different. No, exactly. So it's yeah. better to take by twelve single roses and hide them around, <laughs> you know, and she finds them day after day. You know, oh, he loves me. Oh. <laughs> and you can do the pebbles. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, the yeah, the pebbles. Yeah, the pebbles. Yeah, the pebbles. I love her. You know, even small things. So he said, doesn't matter. So it doesn't size doesn't matter. It's a quite number of them. So I went through a process. And I wrote down all the jobs that took three minutes or less. Three minutes. Yeah, laying the table, cleaning the table, making a cup of tea. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, um, making the bed, picking up the laundry, putting the laundry in the laundry box, and thing. Um, I mean, listen, it's on the back there. <laughs> and I purposely, for a year, said I can do these things. It takes me an extra thirty minutes a day, but my wife just calmed down. Yeah, you Immensely. Mm. Half an hour a day, three minutes this, three minutes that, three minutes this. And I grew as a team player. Of course I grew. So I'm better now. I'm more aware. Mm. I became more aware of my team player role. Mm. But I could, but if I just did one thing, one big thing, then it, 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 it wouldn't, I would think, oh, you know, so some men said, well, I bought you roses three years ago. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, you know. <laughs> So some of my romantic, most romantic moments is when I did something new, which I'd never done before, like I'd hang out the laundry yeah. wow. for the first time. <laughs> she was incredibly romantic. <laughs> like I triggered something very deep, primal in her. Oh, yeah. Such an amazing man. Because <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take three minutes to hang out the laundry, honestly, you know, to, to take it out drop in the line and go by, you know. So I consider, I, I have been through all these things myself to, to try to say, how do I become a better dad and husband? Yeah. Okay, so there's a list on the back. You can take it home then, and you can choose which three minute things you want. Okay? Okay. Anyway. Um, okay. Okay, so you know the love buttons, love languages. Have you done the love languages? Huh? You know love languages? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So finding out which things your partner, your partner or friend or somebody friendship languages really likes and giving it to them specifically. So my wife, she likes to you know, listen to, or she likes to do something together. Certain things like go blueberry picking together. Or just give the things that she really likes to do. For her, I can do that, you know. Because she receives this very, very, you know. Question. Huh? So what about the other way around? What, what is it the wife can do? Well, it's exactly the same. The same. So you're yeah. not saying it's, it's just the same, but you say women well, and wives differently. Men, men to, you have to find out what the man's love language is, yeah? Or the man's love. So most men would like praise. Just. I want to be appreciated for being the man I am. I want you to be aware of the man I am. The good things I am doing as a man in this responsible. I want you to acknowledge that and treasure that. And not just see it as some kind of, well, uh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Thank I, you. I can relate to that. That's yeah. <laughs> So most men just want acknowledgement of their masculinity, and when they get acknowledged of their masculinity, then they have power for growth because it's appreciated. It's good. But most women are just not saying, just saying, "You're not enough. <laughs> You're just not enough." And he goes, "Okay." 
Because there's no energy. It doesn't work. If you say, if she says, come, snuggles up to you on the couch and says, oh, my dear husband, oh, you're incredible. I tell you, you know, maybe you've got to work every day, and you, you work hard, and you really love those children, and I'm so proud of you. You're really trying to contribute to society. So much. But doesn't a woman want that also? Well, she might, but you're just saying if you ask about a man okay. to appreciate the fact that he is doing something. Now, if she said after that, darling, you know, you want an awesome man, gosh, you're so great. Oh, I just love the way you hold me so sometimes, you know, just so good. And then she said after that, darling, would you mind if you came to me next week? Would you say no? <laughs> would you say no? Yeah, I'm just joking, whatever. Yeah. yeah, can you refuse? That's it, that's the point, yeah? Yeah, that's the point, and fundamentally, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. But the, most men just want to know that they're appreciated and valued for the masculine to go. It's the fundamental thing that will allow the masculinity to grow. To know what masculinity they are already showing, so that they can value it themselves, and in value with themselves, they say, I can do more. But without, with only criticism or kind of lack of appreciation, he's just going, well, what does it mean to grow up? You say, do this, but I did this, and you're just still carrying on criticizing me. So that's why a man, like a president, will say, oh, behind every great man is yeah, a great woman. woman. Absolutely. For sure. If a woman can appreciate the man for who he is and, and send those messages, you are valuable for who you are when you can then that man has more energy for growth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just is what it is. But it's so hard because she, she's doing so many. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, it, they're trying to get this balance right. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but the interesting thing about it is that once you learn self management, you don't need that so much anymore because you know how good you are. You know inside yourself. You, yeah? So early in marriages it's really helpful. But once you and once you but once you okay, I'm doing reasonably well. I know I am doing reasonably well. Because I see my wife getting happier, I see these things happier, and I, I can do this better. Um okay. So this is the point, yeah. So can I learn to look at the Truth, beauty, and goodness in others and myself, yeah? So can I do this? So this is the path of growth. Is it? This allows growth to happen. Yeah? How can I see the good that is already in a friend, partner, etc., etc., and it treasure them? Accepting that they have weaknesses, just like I do. Yeah. Okay? So this is what I, I've been through all these things, and I still do many of them. Uh, every morning I take three minutes to, to, to think about the beauty of my children and my spouse and, and friends and things like this. Um, I take time to say to my own self, I'm, I, I have done some good things recently. I can, I can, I, you know, I'm not so bad. And I can go forward, yeah? Um, yeah. One of the methods that's interesting, you know, on YouTube, and talk about Zig Ziglar appreciation. And he gives a really lovely example. And it's a lovely example. But basically, if you're struggling with somebody, then you, if you write down, you really try to find the good points in them. You write them down. You write as many, you keep adding to that list. And every morning or evening, you stand in front of the mirror and you say out loud, I really love hands because he does it. I really love hands because he does this. I really love hands because it. And, over, and your energy changes. Your energy, your po and the person feels it, and they become more positive, and you change. And, and, and he says, you know, when, when he gives this example, he says, you know, the lady gave this thing to her, this, this advice to her, and she came back a few months later, and she said, gosh, you have no idea. Everybody around me changed. They've all become better people. <laughs> you know? So it was kind of really interesting. Zig Ziglar kind of thing. Okay. 
So one of the things, I have a daily habit. I have a daily habit with my wife, is one of the habits is, so when she comes home from work or something, she can maybe go up and hug her and just say something nice about her. It's my time to say oh, I appreciate and value her. It's like a special ritual. Yeah? And then sometimes we add something to it. So when she comes home, I do a dance like an albatross or a dog or something like this. So I walk out like this day. Like a puppy dog. It's like, I'm so happy to see you. You know? And if you look at the albatrosses and the way they love each other, they go, they go ah! <laughs> ah! And then they rub their beaks together. So sometimes we do that. And and if you just do that, yeah, it's good. It's really, it's really for yeah. these animal methods. Yeah, yeah. Because they, you just create this energy of yeah, appreciation. Yeah. Well, well, you just get these habits. Yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but you create this. I love you. I appreciate you. <laughs> but if, without this, how do you know? If you don't create these moments during the day, how do you know? She's sitting on the sofa over there, he's sitting on the sofa there. He goes to bed, he sleeps on his side. And he, how do you know? Look, <laughs> <laughs> show. I'm here. And you're here. Okay? People, people who create, create an appreciation diary at the end of the day, they just take a little diary and just think all the things they appreciate about their partner, children, friends, and during the day become more appreciative of life. They're happier people. Yeah, good. Just happier. <laughs> Because they know life is good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't take long, three minutes at the end of the day, and you can be a happier person. Yeah. Okay? Now, there's lots of things going on, sorry, I'm going to pass time, but just learning to appreciate your parents for who they were is a really, really, really important internal life step. No matter what happened with your parents, to appreciate them for who they were and the good things they did give you is a really, really important part of emotional health in growing up. Because if you can't appreciate them, then you're, on, you're more likely to take on their negative attributes. If you can't appreciate the good they gave you, and then say, I have this good in me too, and I want to pass it on. What you do is take their negative and pass it on. And you will never feel happy with who you are. And so learning to appreciate and say, my parents were who they are, and they gave me this, and they had that. And just, I really appreciate that bit for who they are. And this is part of mental health and all kinds of other things. Yeah? So these kind of sentences, I accept you from you everything, all of it. I accept it all. And at the full price you pay for it, and that I too, and that I too am paying for it. So I accept it all, I take it all, good and bad, but I still appreciate. I will make something out of it. Through your pleasure and in your memory, I it will your your giving the good you gave and you try to give will not be lost. I will try to inherit this and move it forward. I will hold on to it and honor it, and when I can, I will pass it on as you passed it on. These sentences are so precious that we are part of history and developing, trying to do better and better. Because if you just end up being critical and cut yourself over there, all you're doing is much more likely passing the negative, and your children will inherit that. Okay? And also, towards husbands and wives, I take you, yeah? Oh, yeah, uh, healthy child, positive, you know. Um, I take you as a mother and father. Oh, was that the last husband one? Was that one? <coughs> yeah, parent for the spirit, yes. Okay, again, more sentences. I take you as my mother and father, and you can have me as your child. You are for me the right one, and I am the right child for you. <coughs> you are big, and I am small. You give, and I receive. Dear Mother, Father, I'm happy that you have chosen me. Mother, Mother, the two of you are the right <coughs> ones for me. Only you. I honor you. So where did you get this from? This is Helen. 
Hell, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is how it goes by. H-E. Yeah, H-E-L-L-I-N-G-E-L. This is, a, he developed a method called family constellations. Oh, oh Yeah, behind the belly as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he realized that, that a lot of the trauma within people is based upon their inability to be grateful for what they've received. Mm -hmm. And they're just holding on to this blame and accusation and everything. And there's no healing is possible unless you can get appreciation. You have to find that appreciation. So he, so he learned these sentences to say, you just have to accept it, just like you have to accept your family, you have to accept your children, who they are, and just appreciate that. It's really, really very principled. Husband, wife, I take you as my wife. I take you as my husband, with everything that belongs with you. I take it all. I accept it, and we will grow together, basically. I love our children, and love you, and respect you. Okay? Okay. Good? Okay? So this is the fundamental force. But how can I keep consistent appreciation and see new things in people from value and value That's that's it. Okay? Any questions? Does it make sense? No, you got everything. Huh? Don't um, everything. Well, I think this is uh, the meat on the bones of the principle. Mm. Mm. And anyone who thinks that uh, you coming here with your just your ideas and this is mm. not the true principle, mm. I think people should come and listen to you. Thank you very much. Because there are, so there are people in this world yeah. who have certain opinions about you without actually giving her anything you've said. Mm. And I appreciate anyone like you who studies the principle and is seeking how it can relate to our real life, how the, to make the principle um, relevant mm. and usable. Mm. And I think that's what you do. Very reasonable. I, I use this every day in my life. Every single day. This, this theory, this what I'm teaching you, I use it to manage my relationship with my wife for better mm. end. Mm. Yeah? And for with my co-workers or whatever in part. And this is this is how kind of an interpretation, it may be just one of many interpretations, but I this is the way I kind of convey it. And I would tell you this more. What you're saying is very valuable. Thank you very much. People need to listen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 But this is this is the root of the principle. Well. And it's not it's, and, and how anyway, thank you. Any questions? Any other questions or make sense? Much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So there are worksheets associated with this, but we can talk about that later. Yeah? So what time are we meant to be back here? Uh, I think it was, uh, it was meant to be 2.30, but we're running late, so that would, if we have a one and a half hour break, we would be starting again at a quarter. Okay, well, we'll, we'll make it to 2.30.